What's up everybody, this is Matt Brown. Today we are going to take a look at another embedded device. Uh, today what I have out of the e-waste bin is uh, something you see in a lot of corporate offices. It's uh, one of these phones, these conference room phones. This is the Polycom Soundstation 6000 and we are going to uh, take a look at this device uh, through probably a couple videos. So this first video will just be my first look at a device like this. If I'm looking to hack on it, what do I do? Uh, just kind of the basic first steps. Uh, we'll probably do a second video with me really tearing down uh, and, and breaking down what's going on at the hardware level, maybe trying to extract some firmware out of this device. But for this video, we're just gonna take a look at my initial analysis of a uh, network-based device like this. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and look at this at the desk. So uh, right here, I, all I have is the shell of the device, it's just the plastic. Um, so I have taken this device apart. I am starting to do the hardware analysis on it, but uh, for this video, we're just gonna be uh, looking at the network traffic from the device, trying to interact with the device, uh, going through those really basic first steps of uh, IoT hacking on it. So with that, we're gonna go and switch over. So here you can see the guts, the inside of what is inside of that, that phone case. There's a bunch of these you know, microphones that are pointed, that point in a bunch of different directions. So this device is powered over ethernet. So uh, we do have uh, this uh, PoE injector here that uh, will take in just standard ethernet and then it will actually inject power uh, out here and then that's connected up to the phone. So um, yeah, like I said, I've been digging into the hardware, but we're gonna mostly ignore that for now. And uh, the other thing that I'm gonna show about my setup. So lately I've been using a, a switch like this for all my network analysis. I have it configured, this is a managed switch, and I have this port right here configured to uh, be a mirror port. So all the traffic that goes on over these first seven ports is mirrored to this port. And then all I've got, I can actually disconnect this, is right here I have this USB ethernet adapter. And so I just plug this as an extra adapter into my desktop computer and then we're gonna run Wireshark on that. And that's gonna let us capture all that traffic and just completely passively, and we don't have to be in a man in the middle position, and there's a number of reasons why I find that ad advantageous. And then, um, yeah, also on this port, again, so right here is uh, where the, the PoE injector is, uh, is getting its ethernet source from, and then obviously the other side of the injector is going into this device. So we are going to uh, go to my computer and get this set up and ready. So, okay, so I've got Wireshark open here um, and I have an error on my other screen because I unplugged that, uh, that ethernet adapter. So it stopped listening and it's probably not going to think that that adapter exists. So, uh, not a problem. We're just gonna go ahead and find that here really fast and we're going to send that interface up. So we are not running DHCP on this interface. We don't want an IP on this interface. We just want to listen in a promiscuous mode in Wireshark. So all we have to do to do that is uh, bring that interface up. We're gonna close out of that. And now when I go here, I should see that interface. And so now I can start to capture some traffic. And so now I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna turn this on, and uh, this phone is super slow to boot up, so we're going to talk through some other recon uh, that I did on this device while uh, I wait for any kind of network traffic to show up on this screen. So uh, the first thing I did, you know, Googling around, um, this phone uh, is, you know, it's a pretty common phone out there that, you know, enterprises use in conference room settings. And uh, 
we'll, we'll, we'll get into the application of this in a little bit, but I was Googling around for any like default credentials, right? And found out like there's like a default admin password known to like all of the Polycom phones of four, five, six. So, you know, a little bit of foreshadowing that's going to help us out uh, when we start to look at it a little closer. So, like I said, this thing takes forever to boot. Um, so while, while I do this, I'm going to talk a little bit more while, while, while we wait for any data to pop up here. I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, this Ethernet switch setup and why I have started going with this. So I used to, I've had, I've had videos where I've talked about analyzing network traffic from IoT devices using art poisoning. I have had a number of devices that I will miss. I will miss traffic because the art poisoning is not fast enough and there are uh, little bits of data that communicate before the art poison uh, routes the traffic to my machine as the attacker. Okay, we can come back over here to the screen and we are finally getting data rolling in on Wireshark. And um, the first thing that I noticed with this device, right? This is not your normal consumer grade device, right? This is something that sits in a corporate office. And so um, something that I saw here that's really fascinating is this EAPOL message. And so what this is, is this is a form of authentication, a form of ethernet authentication, right? So, you know, when you're at home and you have, you know, your internet router and it has some ethernet ports, you can just plug your computer into that Ethernet port and any computer can get an IP address and can start communicating on that network. Well, in a high security corporate environment, you probably don't want just any random person off the street to be able to plug their, um, pl plug their computer into that port and be on that network, right? You only want authorized devices to be on the network. So that's where this protocol comes in called 802.1x. So this tells me that this device is potentially still configured to authenticate over, over 802.1x. Um, and so potentially this device that we got from the e-way spin has not been uh, factory reset or reconfigured. Um, and so scrolling down. And then the other thing that we get that is just a gem on, on, on this thing, we're, we're, we're seeing all the traffic coming from this device is that it is sending a clear text HTTP message, right? So it's not HTTPS, it's not using TLS. It is sending a clear text uh, HTTP request here. And so to kind of dig into that in Wireshark, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna right click on this interesting packet here. I'm gonna say follow, and then honestly, you can click either one of these, doesn't really matter. I'm gonna click TCP stream. And it's gonna show us, it's gonna pop up with like the actual communications here. Now, here is a standard, you know, HTTP request to, you know, get some software update, right? And it comes back and says 4.3, not authorized, like go away. Um, but this is very interesting that it is potentially trying to do a firmware update over clear text, right? Um, that's something that is super interesting. Like, could I give it a firmware update? That would be something that Again, in this initial look at a device, I'm not gonna go too far down that rabbit trail, but I'm gonna keep that in my notes on this device. Okay, so in Wireshark, just clear out that filter, go back to looking at all the traffic, seeing other things here. Um, NTP, I've done a lot of stuff recently with NTP, IoT devices that, that really rely on NTP. Again, it's another one of these protocols, there's no encryption authentication. Um, you can potentially do a man, man in the middle attack to spoof bad time data to a device. Now, what effect that would have on a device really varies based on what that device is. Let's say it's an access control system, that could be huge, right? If you have some kind of like user codes that are only authorized to access a building at certain times, uh, could you fool the system into thinking that it is a valid time when it's not um, with NTP, maybe. Mm. But in this case, I'm like, okay, whatever. Um, let's keep going. So here, okay, so we are seeing some clear text, uh, or sorry, not cl non clear text communications, some encrypted communications here. We see this client hello message. Uh, 
that is a standard as like the first uh, message in a TLS handshake. And so here we see it's connecting to ztp.polycom.com. You know, and so uh, that's obviously like some backend that this phone is connecting up to. So um, this is all super interesting, but uh, we can see here that the phone's IP is 10.10.60.191. That's just the IP that my local network DHCP handed out to this device. So I think it would be cool for us to actually take a closer look at that. So let's go ahead and copy that IP address off. And so we can like ping the device. Okay, sanity check, it's really online. Let's just run a quick Nmap scan. Not even all ports, uh, I would do that eventually. Um, okay, so there's, there's, there, there's a web server running and, and then there's this SIP server running. So SIP is a phone protocol. We're not gonna go too far into that um, in this video, but that would also be another really interesting protocol for me to look into on, on this device, obviously. But okay, there's a web server. That's really interesting. I would like to go to that. So yeah, like I said, maybe just while I'm waiting, I could like do that, run all, scan all ports. But really what I wanna do is I wanna come over here and I want to come to this web page. So we can see here that there's actually a web server running on this phone uh, on the interface that it, on, on the ethernet interface. And we are presented with a login screen as the admin or as a user. And if you remember, uh, I didn't know anything about this phone until about an hour ago when I started looking at it. And you know, what do I do? I Google, what's the default password for a Polycom device? It's, you know, four, five, six, right? Um, clearly, the, it, it probably would be changed on this device, right? Well, no, it's not. So, so here we go. We're in this device. Now, if you remember, there's a lot of things that we could look at here. And there's some of them that I have uh, looked at and I have redacted. And so, like I said, when we looked at Wireshark, I had a hunch that this device had not been factory reset because it was configured to do... Uh, 802.1x authentication. And so if we actually come in here to settings, nah, settings, network, ethernet. Um, I'm not gonna expand this because I don't wanna like, I don't wanna put this sens sensitive information out into the world. But uh, when I hit this drop down, there is a username that it shows that is like clearly like not a, uh, it's not a standard user um, account. So there is a user and a password. Now it doesn't show me the password. That is what we could get into with the firmware extraction in the next video, where there is a set of 802.1x credentials that are still programmed into this device that I could potentially extract out of the firmware, which uh, is going to involve us pulling the flash chip off. That's for another time, but super interesting configuration here. The other thing that I went and looked at was uh, like, okay, are there any logs? Is there any like persistent data that I could like pull off of this uh, that is sensitive, right? And so I went here and um, so this is all like like stuff. So, so here, this is all just like my network stuff. So I'm not too worried about this. Again, this is like the IP that my local DHCP server handed out to this device. Um, when I went and clicked over on, so there's two log types, there's app and there's boot. And so when I went and I, and I clicked on the boot logs, I'm not gonna click on that now because uh, I have a redacted version of it. Okay, it looks like those are the only three ports that are open. So I have this redacted boot log that looked something like this. So this is just a, a portion of what I found in that boot log. But here you can see that uh, it, was, it was getting, it was showing us what it's local DNS servers on this corporate network that it was configured to. Um, it was showing its search domain, which again, it was basically like, you know, something.company.com, right? We're not, we're not gonna out this company here. 
and um, had some specific information about like, okay, what IP at that time when this log, when this was logged, what IP was the phone given, right? And then we also have, you know, other stuff like a local, like a DNS server, again, on that local network that uh, this device came from. So super interesting stuff. This is, um, there, there's obviously a lot more stuff that we could figure out um, from this web interface. And this is where, uh, as an attacker, I'm really interested now that I have a web, inter web interface like this, I'm really interested to pull the firmware off of the slash chip because what that will allow me to do is it will turn a black box web pen test, right? If I want to try to find a command injection, some kind of authentication bypass uh, in this web interface, that's really hard to do black box. But if I can get the code off of that, for off of that flash chip and it becomes a little bit more gray box, a little bit more white box, now I have a lot higher probability of finding a vuln that can uh, have a big impact. So uh, that's it for this video. Again, uh, stay tuned for the next video where we actually go ahead and look at that firmware, that firmware on that chip, pull it off, and uh, we'll try to go down that line of thought that I just described. So uh, thanks everybody for watching my videos. Please continue to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, really enjoyed all the encouragement. Uh, let me know what kind of videos you want me to make. Peace.